On InstaBlog's Global Report today, we have an exclusive report on Indonesia's capital punishment, which is increasingly becoming the hot topic for debate. We'll talk about this in detail, but that will be later in the show. Hi, this is Shivanjali welcoming you to InstaBlog's Global Report. Moving ahead in the Global Report, let us go to the top stories from all over the world. Obama commits security to Israel. Nepal to end recruitment in British Armed Forces and Kenya superstitions high in modern era. Indonesia is in dilemma on whether to retain the capital punishment or not. The debate is boiling up between those who support it and oppose it. For more details, our CJ reports from Indonesia. This is Ahmad Kisai, citizen journalist for InstaBlog from Indonesia. In the past one week, debate over whether capital punishment should be retained or abolished in Indonesia has become the headlines in several TV stations. Two opposite camps have been pitched against each other while debating the pros and cons. Opposing group argues that the right to life can be abolished and one guilty of serious crime should be put in jail for the longest term possible then the people to death on stake. On the contrary, supporters of capital punishment argue that Indonesia is a sovereign and independent state with a constitutional right to define serious crime and the punishment that is deemed desirable for that. Defending and reforming Indonesia's penal code is necessary to accommodate better change so as Indonesia fits into the new globalized world. The next potential U.S. presidential hopeful Barack Obama's commitment to Israeli security is considered by many as the replica of U.S. biased approach in the Mideast. Is it? Tells our CJ from Israel. This is Jesse Edwards, citizen journalist for Instablogs.com. Fitting in over a dozen meetings, memorial visit to the Holocaust Museum at Yad Vashem, a pre-dawn visit to the Kotel, helicopter tour of the country, and a visit to Sidero to see firsthand the damages the rockets inflict daily were all part of Barack Obama's visit to Israel this past week. Meetings were held with PLO President Mahmoud Abbas, Israeli President Shimon Peres, and Prime Minister Ehud Omer, to name just a few. On Wednesday, Obama proclaimed that he has an unshakable commitment to the security of Israel and that his talks with Abbas indicates a strong sense of progress being made. Hamas officials in Gaza criticized Obama's visit to Sderot as part of the American policy of bias towards Israel and giving legitimacy to Israeli crimes against our people. Apprehension from both the Israeli and American Jewish voters on whether Obama's visit to Israel was sincere or just a show for more votes continues to be explored. It might be wrong to sacrifice Nepalese to protect the foreign borders, but ending Gorkha recruitment to British armed forces will add to the woes of people in a newly born yet impoverished nation. More on this from our CJ from Nepal. This is Mukunda, citizen journalist reporting from Nepal for Instablogs.com. Nepal's Gorkha man, whose service in the British Army helped support tens of thousands of people in their impoverished homeland, will now get to fight another day. The country's new Maoist leaders, who oppose foreign imperialism in all its guises, has threatened to end what they call as the humiliating recruitment of young Nepali men into the British armed forces. This is a hard nosed practically in Nepal where the annual average salary is $470, whereas a Nepali entering the regiment today will get $24,000 equal to his British contemporaries which is more than 50 times the average annual salary in Nepal. Maoists have backed off while concentrating on bringing an economic revolution. However, in a newly born nation, economic revolution seems to distant a dream but happens action can divert the Nepalese people of the employment opportunities the coming government in Nepal would take decades to provide. The dark ages are still not over for the Kenyans. In this era of science when everything is supported by logic, Kenyans still look for jinnies in case something goes wrong. Our CJ reports in detail. This is Rose, a citizen analyst reporting for Kenya for InstaBlow. The superstition or religious practice, the idea of jinns or genie, is highly prevalent in Kenyan Muslim population. The genies are evoked by people whenever they don't understand any happening. Superstition in place of diminishing is becoming more and more accepted by the people. People are even telling prayer to quarks who use such concepts in fooling gilbert habits. The genies or genies are said to be creatures with free will made from smokeless fire by Allah in the same way humans were made of us. 
religious leaders openly preach about genies and their existence among people. The concept de being close to people's heart is the reason why the government is speaking passive about it. And if you want your voice to be heard by millions, let Instablogs be your platform. You can contact us at cj at instablogs.com. That's it in today's show. We'll be back with more updates and more voices. Till then, it's a goodbye from the entire team of Global Report.